This video is about graphing quadratics from standard form. When graphed on the coordinate plane, quadratic functions make a U shape, or sometimes an upside down U shape, that is called a parabola. So on the graph, when we graph these functions, they're going to look like this or like this. The standard form of a quadratic function is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So this is the first time we've seen a function with the x squared in it. The x squared is what makes this a quadratic function, and it's what's going to create that u shape on the graph. These are two examples of quadratic functions. It's important to establish two things about quadratic functions here before we go and learn how to graph them. In standard form, a is the coefficient of x squared. So here, the a is 2. B is the coefficient of the x, so here B is negative 4, and C is the constant term, which here is positive 3. And the other thing to establish is that whether the U goes up or down is all based on the A, the value of A. So if our A is positive, then our U is going to look something like this. It's going to be a right side up U. Our parabola is going to be open up. Versus in this second example here, a is negative 1, b is 1, and c is 3. But again, that whether it's opening up or down, it's all based on a. And so here, since a is a negative number, this tells us that our u is going to be facing down. And b and c will come into play also as we graph the function on the next slide. So the instructions say to graph the quadratic function, we're going to do this by hand showing at least five points, including the vertex. Now, the vertex is the point where the U turns around. It's either the top of the U or the bottom of the U. And to find the vertex, you want to use the formula for the X coordinate of the vertex, which is negative B over 2A. So this will help us find what the X coordinate of the vertex is. And now we know what B and A are. So looking at our function, we have Y equals 1 half X squared minus 2X plus 3. You can see that the b is negative 2. And since the formula has a negative already in it, we're going to make it positive 2. The bottom of our fraction is 2 times a, and a here is a half. Simplify this. 2 over 1, which is 2. That's the x-coordinate of my vertex. So we're halfway to having our first point on our parabola. Once I have the x-coordinate, I'm going to take it and plug it into the function to figure out the y-coordinate. I plug my x coordinate. You always plug an x coordinate in to find the y coordinate that corresponds with it. Remember to do the exponent first. 2 squared is 4. Then 4 times 1 half is 2. Proceed to simplify this to figure out that our y coordinate is 2 minus 4, which is negative 2, plus 3, which is 1. So the coordinates of our vertex putting this x value together with this y value, our 2, 1, I can find that on the graph, I plot my first point. Okay, that's going to be the center of my u. It's either the top of the u or the bottom of the u. And as we look at the function, we can see that our a value, which is a half, is a positive number. And therefore, we know that this u is going to be opening up towards the sky. So that's going to be the bottom of my u right there, bottom of the parabola. To figure out, it needs at least five points, including that vertex. So I need four more points. To figure out the other four points, I'm going to create a table of values with two points on the left, so two x-coordinates to the left of my vertex, like 1, 0. And I have two points that are on the right of my vertex, so two x-coordinates that are on the right of my vertex, like 3 and 4. And take each of those x-values, substitute it into the equation for x, into the function, and figure out the y-values that correspond with them. You can use a calculator to do this. You can show all work by hand if you're asked to show it by hand. So here we're going to have y equals 1 half squared of 1. So I'm plugging in 1, which is my first chosen x value. 1 squared is 1 times a half is a half. So we have 1. 3 over 2. Plugging in 0 is quite simple. I can tell that's going to give me 3. And plug in 3. I'm just going to erase my work here and replace my 1s with 3s. So 
3 squared is 9. Times 9 is 9 over 2. Three halves again, it's because our u is going to be symmetrical on both sides. And I can plug in four, I'm probably going to find that the answer spits out a three again. So let's see if I plug in four, I can do this one mentally. Four squared is 16, half of that is eight. Eight minus eight is zero, and zero plus three is three. So sure enough, I ended up with the same set of y values twice because our u is going to be symmetrical around this vertex. So I can plot these other points. I have a point one, comma, three halves, zero. 3, I have a point 3, comma, 3 halves, and 4, 3. When you connect the dots in a parabola, try to make it as smooth of a curve as you can. It's not shaped like a V, it is shaped like a U. So try to make it go through the vertex nice and smooth. Put arrows on the end to show that this parabola does continue forever. And that's our first parabola. It's always good to label important points, like this vertex is a key point. And any intercepts that we have are key points as well. So we want to label this y-intercept that I see over there. And there's going to be times when you're asked to draw what's called the axis of symmetry for your parabola. So I'll put that one on this graph just so you can see where it would be. The axis of symmetry, it's like a y-axis that goes through the vertex of your parabola. I usually draw it as a dotted line because it's not really part of the graph. I'm just showing you where the symmetry lies. So on the left and right side of this red dotted line that I just drew, the parabola is symmetric. So it's the same on the left as it is on the right. Mirror images. And so the equation of this line, this red line that I just drew, is x equals 2. It's always x equals whatever the x-coordinate of the vertex is. Okay, that's the axis of symmetry. Let's write that word down. This is the axis of symmetry. So if you're asked for that, if you see that in the instructions, just always remember it goes through the vertex, so it has x equals whatever the x value of your vertex is. You should be able to now complete an analysis of a function without actually graphing the function. Okay, so this is the function that we just had on this graph. Without even looking at the graph, we should be able to answer these questions. Just got to define a few words for you. So concavity, when it asks you for concavity, that means does it open up or does it open down? Remembering that this function has a positive one half as our a value, it opens up. So we would say that this is concave up. It asks for the x coordinate of the vertex. Remember that we got that by doing negative v over 2a. The x coordinate of the vertex came out 2. Let's go back to the slide and see positive 2. The y coordinate of the vertex came out to positive 1 when we took in our took our 2 and plugged it back into the function. The equation of the axis of symmetry, x equals 2, it was x equals the x coordinate of the vertex. Coordinates of the y intercept, you always find a y intercept by changing x to 0. Now we already did it on our table, but if we hadn't done it on our table, just take a function and change all your x's to 0, figure out what y equals. And since it's asking for the coordinates of the y-intercept, we want to say 0, 3. And then the last question is the coordinates of the point that is symmetrical to the y-intercept. So if the axis of symmetry is at 2, and we have a y-intercept at 0, 3, it means that the point that is symmetrical to the y-intercept is going to lie across the axis of symmetry the same distance away. So the distance between 0 and 2 is 2 units. And now we're going to start from the 2 and go 2 more units past that to get to 4. So we're looking for the coordinates when x is 4, what's the y value of the quadratic equation here. And we should know that because this is symmetrical, it's going to lie on the same level as where our y-intercept is. So this is always going to be the same y value as the y-intercept. Without graphing, tell whether the function has a maximum or a minimum value. Another kind of analysis type question without graphing it. And then if we're going to find the value of that maximum or minimum. So what determines if a function has a maximum or minimum is whether it has a low point or a high point, right? 
this point would be called a minimum because it's the lowest point on the curve. This point would be called a maximum because it's the highest point on the curve. So when we're looking at a function without graphing it, remember what determines if it opens up or down. And it's the value of that A. Because A is positive 2 here, I know that this U is going to be concave up, open up to the sky. And therefore, it has a minimum point. So when your A value is positive, your function has a minimum. When your A value is negative, your function has a maximum. And the minimum point is at the vertex. Now, since the question also wants us to find that value, we're going to have to figure out where the vertex lies. We know that the formula to find the x-coordinate of the vertex is negative b over 2a. This function, our b is 8, our a is positive 2, negative 8 over 4 is negative 2. But the value of the function is what it wants there, right? It wants the minimum or maximum value of the function. So we're going to have to take our x value, which is negative 2, plug it back in and find out at that place what is the value of the function. So I'll take my function, everywhere I see x, I'm going to replace it with negative 2. And the minimum, this was a minimum because our vertex is at the bottom of our u, the minimum value of the entire function is y equals negative 1. That's the lowest value that the function ever has. And that is all.